you're both here. Well, now I know you're often reluctant because I don't know if people know this. You are considered, if not the best, you're one of the, the top three air base players <laughs> in the world. And I know it's, it's something you rarely talk about on a talk show, but no. you just gave it there. Would you be able to give us just a quick... I'm incredibly modest about it. Mm. Um, <laughs> I'm one of the best at being modest, by yeah, the way. Yeah, yeah, No, that's a fact. Uh, I guess I could... G I mean, I, your audience probably doesn't want to see it. <laughs> I, I do feel an obligation, you know, the idea of noblesse oblige, mm. you know, that I... as mm. it, When you have a gift, mm. that you have to share it with uh, the entire world. Mm. Now I'm speaking European. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just... just I'm wait. not European, but I guess if I... <laughs> <laughs> this is in honor of the great John Glazer. Are you ready? A world exclusive. <laughs> Thank um, you. It feels good. I just the, the term goat gets used so much. Yes, right like... around. You're right. <laughs> and what a way, Malia, to be in, to be inducted into your first ever late night talk show appearance. Oh. This is your first ever. <laughs> How are you feeling? Are you good? Do you feel okay? I feel good because I'm with you, but I'm very nervous. <laughs> well, no, you, you don't need to feel nervous about anything whatsoever. I mean, you, you're you know you're a, a wonderfully skilled performer. What was your first ever time on stage? in front of an audience like? What do you remember about that? Um, I, I think I was uh, nine or 10. It was a production of uh, a, like a different version of The Little Mermaid. Mm. It's called Sea Spell. And I really wanted to be The Little Mermaid, but my voice was too low. So I couldn't sing those beautiful high notes. So they made me the witch. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I had to walk, there, there was like a div dividing sort of between the audience, and I had to walk through the audience with a cape and go over them and belt out these low notes, and it was really cool, actually. Oh, well, and look at that, yeah. and see? And who would have thought that back then you'd be telling that <laughs> on a couch next to what is arguably the greatest air bass <laughs> player of all time? <laughs> I mean, yeah. Will, what about you? What do you, what do you remember about your... What was your first just, stage? It's just arguably, you yeah. didn't need to say that. <laughs> <laughs> what was your first time on stage like? When did you start performing? Um, strangely enough, I also... I, I did not have a very low voice <laughs> at the time. I had a, quite a high voice. I was 12 years old, and I was still, like, squeaky, kind of like this. <laughs> and I did a, a production of HMS Pinafore. Ah. Yeah. And, um, and I played Rafe Rackstraw, and I had to sing. And um, I don't think I was very good, but, but it was a lot of fun. And I, I've never been asked to sing again. Well, we have a photo of you yeah, here. Yeah, there I am on the right. This is you That's here, me. right, Will? This is you <laughs> yeah. in HMS Pinafore. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I already feel like you're absolutely committed to the performance. I was very committed. Yeah, I was about to be sent uh, for crime unknown. I've sent to a dungeon cell. I remember the lyrics. Yeah. <laughs> As, as if it were 40 years ago. <laughs> now, Malia, you have a very interesting background. You were born in Switzerland. You were raised in Greece. You went to school in England. You now live in Los Angeles. Wow. Where do you consider to be home? I'm going to add one in there. I was conceived in China. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. Wow, your okay, folks really got around. Everything yeah, about it. Bump. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So um, where do you consider home? I'm very confused, I gotta say. My, my dad, who's not, no longer with us, was from Peoria, Illinois. That's mm -hmm. a, you know, a very specific place. And then my mom is so Greek, and I was raised there, but in an English school, so I've always felt confused. And I... <laughs> but, I mean, you, you, if we're talking about getting around the globe, you've been doing a lot. You've started hosting a brilliant Formula One post uh, podcast. A yeah. Formula One podcast. You've already been to quite a few races this season. Have they let you near a car yet? No, they're <laughs> smart in that way. They right. haven't. Um, but I have... No, that's not true. I was in, I was in Singapore. Danny Ricardo let me hold the steering wheel, which mm. looks like a like a remote, like a um, video game remote yes. times a million. Yeah. And, and, it's, it's, and then when I was in Austin a couple weeks ago for the US uh, Grand Prix, I did get into a souped up McLaren with Mika Hakkinen. Right. And we did a lot, we did a hot lap as it's called. Yeah. Um, I don't know why I'm looking out. Hot lap, anybody? <laughs> hot lap. Hot lap, anybody? And uh, so I did 175 miles an hour. Wow. Very scary. 
Um, but I mean, you're so into racing now. It was your son's uh, 14th birthday this weekend, and yes. you, you took him and his buddies go karting. I took. So I took my 14 year old son Archie. It was his birthday, and I took some and some of his friends out uh, to to uh, uh, a real racing hotbed out in in Burbank and. <laughs> <so> <laughs> Perfect. So we uh, uh, we go out there and we did we did P1 quali and the race mm. with the kids. First P1, which is like the you know you did, everybody's just kind of setting the time. I had great lap average, but not the best time. But I also realized that I was getting way too in, into it. And some 14 years were like, like yo, Arthur, your dad cut me off. <laughs> and I was like, Whoa. and so I looked I looked at at his mom and I was like. You know, I'm going to hang with you on this one. I yeah, think I'm going to sit out. I think we'll let the boys... Sit out the qualifying. Yeah, I think yeah. I'm going to sit out the qualies. So. Now, Malia, we have to congratulate you on your... Uh, fant it's hard for me to talk about. Your brilliant TV show, Mammals. Yes. For anyone who doesn't know, uh, tell us what it's about and who you play. Uh, it's uh, Mammals is a show uh, that I'm in with James. Um, I play your French wife, Amandine. Mm -hmm. um, and... I'm, I guess, a little naughty as a wife. I'm not the easiest wife to be with, I guess. Well, it's a hard show to talk about yeah. because essentially everything after the first five minutes is an absolute spoiler. spoiler everything. That's where it's very difficult. But <laughs> let me tell you this, and I mean this from by my heart. You are, I should tell you about, I'm going to tell you this. Mm. When there was, um, Ches Butterworth, who wrote the show, said 129, I think it was 129 actors put themselves on tape for uh, the part that Malia plays. One person, uh, screen tested here in this building. It was 35 feet from where we are right now. Yeah. Malia came in and did her screen test, and from the from the first tape you ever put down to every day you're on set, it could have never been anyone else. You are absolutely brilliant in the show, and I'm excited for people to see you. Let's take a look at a clip from Mammals, which is available on Amazon Prime Video, November 11th. Oh. Yeah, I made him do that. Oh, he's waking up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh. Feel that? Yeah. Do you think he's going to like us? At first. Then he'll find us embarrassing. Then hate us. And then hopefully after a while he'll like us again. But not too much, eh? So when we're gone, he misses us for a bit and then forgets all about us. Happy anniversary, Mrs. Buckingham. It's well, Monsieur Buckingham. Oh. <laughs> Stick around! What with these two? Women?